Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. There is a day of judgment that all men must face, when they will have to give account of all the members of their body. So what are the members of the body? Your eyes. What will you say to God when you have to give account for your eyes? What have you been watching with your eyes while you are alone or when you are with people? What have you been focusing on with your eyes? Your eyes are the pathway to your heart. What you look at is kept in your heart. The Bible says that if it is your eyes that will cause you not to enter into the kingdom of God, you need to remove it, not literally remove it. What this means is that you must learn to control your eyes. Remove your eyes from evil. Remove your eyes from what can take you to hell. Stop looking lustfully at the opposite gender. Control your eyes. You have the power over them. You must control them. Job says in Job chapter 31 verse 1 that, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maiden? What covenant are you making with your eyes? What are you doing with your eyes now? Are you making a covenant with your eyes that you will never use them to sin against God? Are you making a covenant with your eyes that you will never use them to look down on people? What covenant are you making with your eyes? It is amazing how Jesus connected what we do with our sight with fornication and adultery in Matthew chapter 5 verses 27 through 28, which says, Ye have heard that it is said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. In the Old Testament, the law only prosecuted those that are caught in the act of adultery or fornication or other forms of immorality. Back then, if any adulterer is not caught with evidence, then he or she is free from the law. Again, in the Old Testament, there was nothing said about the lust of the eyes which is the foundation for the committal of sexual sins. However, Jesus came to repeal this law by saying that a person is not only guilty when he or she indulges in the very act of sexual immorality, but that heaven takes into account the very moment he or she begins to look lustfully at a woman or man as the case may be. So, sexual immorality is birthed first of all by a lustful sight. No one can commit sexual immorality in his or her heart without first of all looking lustfully. The discipline of our eyes is very important if we are going to secure our spiritual lives. You have an eyelid so that you can shut your eyes from evil, unholy things. The decision to look or look away is always yours and mine, and we are going to give account for what we do with that liberty. Brothers and sisters, you will give account for what you have been looking at. You will give account for your hands. Some people have blood on their hands. They have shed the blood of the innocent. Do you use your hand to commit evil? When you are working, what are you using your hands to do? Are you using it to steal from your company? Are you using it to bring people down? Are you using it to torment people? What are you doing with your hands? It is time to start working with your hands. It is time to be honest with your hands. Raise your hands and use them to worship God. Psalm chapter 134 verses 2 through 3 Lift your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth, bless thee out of Zion. Do you use your hands to steal? What are you using your hands for? You will have to give account for what you did with your hands. You will give account for your feet. You will give account of what you do with your feet. Where do you go with your feet? Some people's feet are rushed to do evil. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 7 their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. One thing you should remember is that what you rush to do with your feet, you will give an account of. Everywhere you go to, you will give an account of. You must cautious yourself. Do you go to places filled with immorality? Do you go to places where God hates? Are you a person who secretly goes to places without your wife's knowledge or husband's knowledge? Today is the day to stop and repent. Today is the day to stop going to strip clubs or driving those dodgy streets at night and doing those immoral things. Today is the day for you to stop going to that person's house. Be faithful towards God if you are single. Be faithful to God and to your partner if you are married. 
A simple way to know if you should go somewhere or not is this. If the rapture was to happen when you are at that place, would you be sure that you will be caught up with those who are dead in Christ? Live a holy life. Stop using your feet to rush to evil. You will give an account for your mind. This is one of the important parts of the body that you will give an account of. What have you been thinking? What is on your mind right now? Many Christians are into the habit of sitting alone and thinking of ungodly things. They imagine doing immoral things with other people. This is bad. This is what we need to deal with in our lives. We will stand before the judge and start talking about what we have had in our minds. We will give an account of every thought that has gone through your mind. It is what you think in your heart that you will do. Your heart influences your action life and what influences your heart is what you see. All of these things will be what you will give account. What have you been thinking? What has always been on your mind? What are the things that you need to get rid of from your mind? You need to get rid of evil thoughts. The Bible says we must think of heavenly things alone. We must think of pure things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think of these things. We need to make sure we have this in our minds. We need to remind ourselves constantly that we will give an account of everything we have done or things we are doing. This will help us to do the right thing. I pray God will help us to go the right way. Your mouth. Every time I remember that we will give an account of every word we speak, every single word we have been speaking out, I always ask myself, what have I been saying? Jesus made it very clear in Matthew chapter 12 verses 36 through 37. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account therefore in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Will you be justified on judgment day, or will you be condemned? It will be determined by what you have been saying. What have you been saying to yourself? What have you been saying to other people? Have you been telling lies? Have you been telling lies just to bail yourself out of trouble? You will give an account of everything. You cannot run from it. Many call themselves Christians, but they speak evil. They say ungodly things just because they want to entertain people. They want to make people laugh. You will give an account of all these words. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 4 that neither filthiness nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Lock your mouth if necessary. Don't talk too much. In other words, shut up. Don't speak for the sake of speaking. Everything you say, you will have to give account for. Know how to listen instead of talking all the time. It is impossible not to sin if you talk too much. Be careful of what you say because you will give an account of your mouth and all that came out of it.